Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am setting up my pocket bullet journal for the month of March. This is a Lick Term 1917A6 or pocket sized bullet journal in black. I recently did a flip through of the setup. If you want to check that out, I will link that up in the cards for you so you can see kind of my beginning collections and January and February. But I do have a discount code on the USA Loic Term 1917 site. I can list that down below. It's non-affiliate, but if you're looking to get your hand on one, save a little bit of money, I can put that down below for you. So for the month of March, I am setting up sort of this, well, I don't really have a full on theme, but it is centered around this photo. This photo is from Unsplash. I will link it down below. I printed it off on some matte sticker paper and I just like the vibes for coffees. March is a special month for me because it is my birthday month. And I don't know, there's something about coffee. It's my daily potion that I need. <laughs> To get through another year. I really liked the color palette in this photo and I thought it would be a fun way to kind of switch things up. So far with my setup in here, I've been using a lot of photos that I found on Unsplash to kind of set the tone versus me trying to draw something or use a kit or something like that. It is something I picked up watching Rachel Stevens videos. I think that's her name. I will link her channel down below. She has a very beautiful minimal bullet journal and I just really enjoyed the vibe. <laughs> so I thought I would try something similar. But for the month of March, I put that photo down on the right hand page and on the left hand page, I drew in a horizontal monthly calendar. These squares are three by three Monday start and I drew in the lines using a uni pen in 0.1, which is a fine liner, and I'm writing in the numbers using my Pilot Vanishing Point, which is a fountain pen inked with my usual Diatramentus Archive ink. This paper is 80 GSM and it handles that fountain pen and ink combo really well. I have not tried like a thicker nib to see if it will feather on this paper or not. There is a fair amount of ghosting with this paper. Uh, just because it is 80 GSM, but really like that. And to sort of finish up my title page, I am stamping in March. I will link this stamp set down below. They are filthy. I am really bad about cleaning my stamps. Don't be like me. <laughs> Clean your stamps after use, but I only use black ink, so it hasn't really been too much of a problem. But uh, as you saw, I was flipping back to my future log, transferred in all of my events and appointments. And to spice it up even further, I had this washi tape that I picked up from Daiso. It was just really unique, kind of a white masking tape and you really only see the pattern if you put it over something dark. And I thought this was a good opportunity to kind of take advantage of that darker corner of that photo. So I put that down and then this mushroom washi tape from Notebook Therapy. Uh, now I'm trying to choose my accent color and I think the reason I was so drawn to this particular photograph is because it matches all of my favorite Tombos. <laughs> if you're curious about what all of those are, I do have a very long pen video where I walk you through all my favorites. I can link that up for you, but the color I went with for March is my trusty 947, which is this beautiful rust color that I really like. Flipping the page, I will be using this two page spread as my monthly task list along with my habit tracker. And to sort of keep the theme going, I stamped out tasks. I'm using Versa Fine Magic Chalk Ink in Midnight Black. And as we will see, I stamped my K upside down and I make so many mistakes in my bullet journal. I get people who, you know, will comment and be like, why are there no mistakes? There are, I just, don't take photos of them <laughs> or I leave them and if I don't call out attention to it, most people don't notice it. So I stamped the K upside down and I just determined that that was the vibe for March and we are leaving it because I think if I tried to cover it up and restamp it or, you know, do washi tape or something, it's just going to look more messy than an upside down K. So little things like that I am leaving. But my monthly task list is where I'm writing down kind of my big projects that I want to accomplish throughout the month and then I will cross them off and as I kind of think of other things, we're about a week out from the month actually starting so I will start migrating things that I haven't completed yet uh, along with any other uh, project that kind of comes up that I need to tackle during the month along with my goals. And on the right hand page, I am doing a habit tracker. 
I have been struggling on the habit tracker game. Like for the last three months, I want to say it's winter blues. I don't really have a valid excuse other than I have just not been doing sort of my basic functions and I figured I would just try a different type of layout. I've been really relying on monthly habit tracker inserts where it's like one through 31 layouts and I think, you know, switching it up, sometimes a new layout can kind of re-inspire me to you know, tackle my habits a little bit more effectively. And this month I'm trying the mini calendar layout and I'm trying to kind of draw out the full 31 days plus the 28th of February. And I'm gonna draw out six habits again using that same uni pin fine liner in 01. That's the black color. I also have this one in like a dark gray and a light gray. Maybe I'll pull those out for next month. But like this one, because it doesn't smudge, I can highlight it with a Tombow, which I really like. And I will write in the name of the specific habits uh, right above the mini calendars once I kind of finish deciding what my goals are gonna be for the year. And I'll either draw in an X for the days that I complete the habit or I will color it in with a Tombow. I typically choose to use like pen only when it comes to my habit trackers because if I don't have that particular Tombow marker with me, then I won't fill it in and then the data starts to get off or I'll lose motivation over silly things like that. So most likely an X, but I'm hoping this new layout will sort of inspire me to, <laughs> to do the things that I say I want to do. And carrying over similar washi tape that is foiled more mushrooms from notebook therapy and that same sort of white washi tape that I love but totally blends in with the paper so I have to find kind of unique ways to layer it but it adds a very textile element to the spread which I quite like and it's just something that is a little bit different. So following that I am setting up my weekly dashboards and this is a week on two page horizontal spread. Monday through Sunday will be on the left hand page. Monday through Friday get four squares. Saturday and Sunday only get three rows for those days to get this to fit in nicely. And this is a layout that I discovered works super well for me from a planning perspective after my adventures with the Hobonichi Weeks in 2021. I always thought I was a vertical layout person and I just realized what I actually am as a daily planner. I prefer a daily log with a daily to-do list so I can zero in on what I actually need to get done. But a weekly spread helps me organize and it gives me a landing page for anything I actually need to accomplish throughout the week and between those two things I found sort of my sweet spot when it comes to you know being productive and a daily also gives me a little bit more space to memory keep write down notes and thoughts in a way that I typically wouldn't do in a weekly spread because I would feel I'd feel a little bit restricted typically so this is a layout I am carrying over very much into this year and on the theme of making mistakes, I missed a date here. And most mistakes like that, I would just kind of continue to carry on. But when it comes to my dates, I'm a very numbers uh, text type of learner. So if I write down the wrong date, I will actually show up for an appointment <laughs> on the wrong day. So this was something I thought, yep, I got to fix that. So I just used some whiteout from Tombow and some date dot stickers from a Randy dot plans kit that I had I believe from an old Patreon subscription. So I'm just using those throughout because I had enough to kind of get me through the month of March. So I lay out all um, weeks that I associate with the month of March uh, right after each other so that they are all right up next to the calendar. And then I will follow with my daily logs afterwards. I like having all of these set up because I kind of give myself permission to write things in. So I won't necessarily do it on camera today, but after this, I will take all the events that I wrote in on my monthly, translate those to the weekly dashboards, look at all the goals and tasks from my monthly to-do list and start breaking them down and kind of distributing them across the four weeks that I associate with March. Um, I, I think most people will consider March a five week month because there's only three days of April in that last week, but I break up my month based on my paydays and I get paid on the 1st of April, which is a Friday. So I include that whole last week in my April, um, which is something that I love about bullet journaling because I can break up 
the month in a way that makes the most sense for me and my budget and how we run things in our household a little bit more than being like, oh, that belongs to March and trying to, I don't know, think about it a little bit differently. I like the flexibility, I guess. Again, I'm doing all of my writing using my Pilot Vanishing Point. It is sort of my go-to. I like that I can highlight it. I really like that I don't have to wait for it to dry on the Lichterm paper. I can kind of just turn the page right away and I don't have any transfer. I haven't really been using any uh, blotting paper or anything like that. This ruler, by the way, is from the Coffee Monsters Co. I can link her shop down below. It was from like an anniversary bundle. I think she has them in rose gold too. Uh, occasionally, I don't know if they're in stock or anything like that, but uh, power of editing. This is the fastest I've ever set up my weekly spread. Uh, but I talked about this a little bit in my flip through. I'm really just enjoying the pocket size. I like the portability of it. I get a lot of questions on like, do I prefer this over Astology or the Midori or anything like that? Ultimately, what it comes down to is I like that these are self-contained. I like that they're hardcover. I like a black notebook. I like that I can, you know, put a pen loop on it with an elastic closure and I don't really need a whole lot of accessories to support it. So I did get a new stamp in the month of February. I can link it down below. It's from Amazon, but I'm going to stamp my dates for my daily logs for the month of March. This is my March setup. I'm keeping it pretty minimal, but I think it has a certain vibe to it that I really appreciate. I'm hoping that the new habit tracker layouts clicks with me for the month of March. If you have set up for March, what was your theme or vibe down below? Do you do themes? Do you like to print photos and put them in your setup? Let me know down below. If you've made it this long, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.